My name is Mitch and today we are installing a transmission cooler for the T1 1500 series GM trucks. So the first step is going to be to remove these two T15 screws so that we could get the hood latch handle off. So the next step is we're going to remove all 10 of these little push clips that hold on the uh, radiator shroud up here and then remove the radiator shroud. So for the next set, we're just going to remove this little push clip right here. Um, we're not going to fully remove the whole duct, but we're just going to uh, get it loose and out of the way so that we have better access to one of the transmission fittings down there. There you go. And then you also want to remove this little clip that sits here. And now we have a little bit better access and this moves around a little bit. Our next step is going to be removing these uh, two 15 millimeter bolts that are holding these rods on. And then we're gonna push the rods out of the way to get better access to the transmission cooler. So the next step is that we're going to remove these uh, plastic caps that are around the transmission lines and then remove the uh, wire clips that hold the transmission lines in. However, we're not going to remove the transmission lines until the next step. So just for clarity, I'm gonna show uh, taking off the clip off the car because it's very hard to see when it's on the car. So you have this uh, metal clip right there and you can kind of see the end of it and you just take the end, pull it back and then pull it out. If it does drop or something, our kit does come with new fittings with new clips on them. So uh, it's no big deal, but always try to get it with your fingers before it just flies off. Uh, our next step is we're going to be removing the one 10 millimeter bolt that's located right there that holds the transmission cooler to the cooling stack. Uh, so in the next step, we're going to be removing the transmission cooler and the lines. So what I'm doing is I'm putting these absorbent mats underneath the transmission cooler so that when I pull the lines out, it'll catch some of the fluid and make a little bit less of a mess. Uh, this process might get a little bit messy, but um, as long as you kind of catch all the transmission fluid and take it out uh, rather fast, you can limit how much spills out of the transmission cooler. All right.
In our next step, we're going to be assembling the new transmission cooler. Uh, you're gonna take the two provided bolts and put a lock washer and then a washer on it. And then with a three millimeter Allen wrench, you're going to install it. Uh, you're going to notice that these holes are slotted. We're gonna start off by putting the bracket in the middle of the slots. And if we need to adjust it, we could do that later. We're just backing this off a little bit so that I can get some adjustment in there. And then tightening it down. And then the last step we're gonna wanna do is uh, to make sure that these fittings are tightened. Uh, they should come tightened already, but it's always a good idea to double check that and just make sure that they're not gonna leak once they're installed on the vehicle. Uh, this is 19 millimeters, and then you'll see we have a counter hold right there so that you uh, don't break off the fitting. And then on this side, you're gonna counter hold it with a 22 millimeter wrench. So now we are dropping the new transmission cooler into the truck. So what you're gonna wanna do is just kinda put it in like that and it should fit. You might have to play around with these support bars a little bit to get it in. A few words of uh, advice on getting the uh, lines connected and get, getting everything in. First, uh, we recommend taking a little bit of transmission fluid and uh, lubricating both the fitting and the line before you put everything in. Um, these lines are aluminum, so you might have to play around with them and you know do a, a small amount of bending to get them back in the OEM position so that everything lines up. Um, try not to force the lines on. They are aluminum. They're a little bit delicate. Uh, so we recommend getting everything in position, getting the lines connected. There is a little ridge on this side that will hold up the transmission cooler. Uh, you could also put the bolt in loosely, uh, kind of get it connected, get the lines connected. And then um, once everything is connected, you're going to hear a click as the lines uh, go into the fittings. Uh, so you know that they're seated. And then the last step is just tightening this uh, 10 millimeter bolt right here. And then it's all set and we could start putting the car back together. Now that we have the transmission cooler installed, uh, generally what we like to do before we put it all back together is turn the car on and just make sure that nothing's leaking. Uh, generally trucks like this will have a thermostat in the transmission line so you want to wait until the truck gets fully up to temperature just let it idle for a while um, and uh, once it's fully up to temperature just uh, check the fittings check the lines make sure everything isn't leaking um, and you're gonna want to get it up to temperature anyway to do the transmission fill procedure um, so uh, just make sure there's no leaks and then uh, we're gonna put it back together uh, now we're just reinstalling the bolts for these support bars, 15 millimeters. And then don't forget to reattach the cable and don't forget to uh, reinstall the pop clip for the air intake duct. Just reinstalling the cowl panel, throwing these pop clips back in. Before you close the hood, do not forget to reinstall the hood latch handle right here. Uh, it's two T15 screws.
So we're gonna check the trans fluid level on this uh, T1 here. So a couple things you're gonna need is uh, wheel chocks. You wanna chalk the vehicle while you're going underneath it, especially while it's running. Uh, you don't want it to roll over on you. Creeper's nice to have. Uh, you're gonna need some trans fluid. Um, some way to uh, pump the trans fluid in through the hole in the side of the trans. And we're using a, a little bit of uh, exhaust heat shielding to uh, wrap around the exhaust while we're working near the trans so we don't drip on the exhaust and also so we don't burn ourselves. Okay, so the weep hole to check the fluid level is right there on the side of the trans. Uh, the exhaust is right here very conveniently. So we have this heat shielding here. We're just gonna wrap around to keep the fluid from getting on the exhaust and also to protect our hands. Okay, so we got our drain pan here, catch any excess fluid that comes out. So now we're just gonna pull the weep pull plug out of the transmission. Okay, so you can see there's not any fluid weeping out of the hole, which means we need to add some. So now we're gonna grab our transmission fluid and our uh, pump and start adding fluid. Okay, so we have our transmission fluid here and our pump with a little hose extension to get inside the, the hole inside the transmission. So we're just gonna snake this up over top of the drive shaft into the hole and you just want to fill it up until it starts to weep out of that hole. So now you can see the transmission fluids weeping out of the hole. So we are at the correct level now. So we can take our plug and reinstall it. And just one important thing to note when you're doing this, you want to make sure the transmission fluid is at least 160 degrees Fahrenheit before checking the level and obviously have the vehicle running as well. All right, it should be all good. Now we can just take this heat shielding back off and we're all done. Thanks for watching our installation video for the T1 transmission cooler. Please visit our website for more information and please subscribe for future videos.